and the Ziploc bag was filled with poop. You know, so I have owned property like I do now. I've leased property. I've been able to use other people's property. I've been on property, I guess, my, my whole life, right? And so I've been able to, to view these problems that we're gonna talk about from various positions, I guess. And so a lot of you out there that want a piece of land, you wanna move from the city out to the country, or maybe it's been your lifelong dream, you know, you're going into your first piece of property and shopping for it, looking for it, planning for it, and maybe you don't know, you don't think about all these potential pitfalls that could be involved. And so this is kind of share some insight on what I've learned, you know, the things that you can potentially try to avoid or try to minimize, try to set yourself up for success in the best way possible. So when we were going property hunting, you know, my wife and I looking for our own piece, I think I was driving her crazy with the amount of properties that, you know, either we found, a realtor found, they just popped up in, in a, you know, in a, in, a, in a new listing and I turned them down right away. One of the first things that I would do besides seeing the price point, the acreage, all that kind of thing is pull up the overhead map and see how many neighbors it bordered, right? Because I can think of one example very clearly, it was a beautiful piece of land, it was in a great location, but it butted up on one side, on the north side, I think it was, to an entire neighborhood. There were 35 neighbors just on that one border, that one side of the property, plus all the other neighboring properties on the other sides too. And there was, uh, I can think of another uh, location as well that we walked and there was a, a tree stand from one of the neighborhood homes facing over into the field and a gut pile even right out there too, where obviously the neighbors are just, you know, in the neighborhood just, doing whatever they want with the land. We saw people walking dogs out there while we were walking the property. And maybe, who knows, maybe you're okay with that kind of thing, right? I am not. If I'm going to work hard and try to, you know, fulfill my life's, one of my life's dreams to own a nice chunk of land, then I want to use it for what I want to use it for. It's, it's not for everybody else to enjoy. It's not a public park. It's, you know, maybe it's a case by case situation if they want to take a walk sometime, I don't know. But the point being, don't, underestimate how many neighbors you have. I mean, the, the, in general, the fewer neighbor, neighboring properties you have, the better. That's a big one, so don't, don't overlook that. So this ties into a few other related components, not necessarily have to be, but will be. So our, our, we have two properties, two chunks of property right now, and our vacant land that we have was vacant for a long time. Like, well, it's, it's always been vacant, but um, the previous owner just didn't do anything with it. They didn't, they were never out there. I don't think they, they really cared. And so the neighboring community that was by a lake just treated it however they wanted to and walked all over it and did all sorts of stuff. And so it was a huge burden to try to get folks out of there, you know? And, and uh, Chris and I were actually out there shooting a video kind of just way back in the middle of the property. And these two ladies come out there and just basically say, hey, you mind if we just come out here and walk on a daily basis or do our, our regular walk through your property? <laughs> so they had to come and you know trespass on the land, go by, no trespassing signs, come out there, ask that question. you know. And, and there were other neighbors that were like that too. We kind of chased one down that was in a car who was, what is that word, a, a belligerent? Bel belligerent? belligerent and uh, didn't care at all. We were filming her. She didn't give a rip. She gave us her name, her address. She said, what are you guys doing out here? What's your plans? I said, that's none of your business, you know? And she said, I'll just go to the township hall and whoever else and I'll find out what you guys are doing. Like we were doing something malicious or whatever. But you get big problems like that with nosy neighbors, needy neighbors too, right? And, and so that's a, that's a fine line. That's a slippery slope. And I found that out pretty early with this neighbor who was planning on building a cabin that you can probably see in the background of some of our videos, uh, right bordering our property. And I'm not sure what their plan was originally, but basically within a couple of weeks of, of us owning the property, got a phone call of him asking to do one delivery. He had one delivery that he couldn't get up his driveway and so it was flat land. It, so asking if the, the crew could go through our property and drop it off on the back of his property. I said, okay, that, that's fine. And so that one delivery turned into over and over and over. Every contractor needed to go in and out of there constantly, right? We ended up gating that lock and then they wanted access to get in and out of there. And I was like, listen, man, this was a, a one-time thing that you needed and this just turned into a regular occurrence. Like I'd be out there and there'd just be contractors going back and forth by me through my property over to get to his property. It was, 
out of control and uh, he needed it for this delivery and that delivery and the other one. And you know, I'm, I don't know what the, the right answer is. You don't want to be a jerk and not help out somebody, but at the same time, <laughs> it went from one thing to a never ending occurrence. And that's just with one neighbor, right? If you have a big chunk of land and you do that with all the neighbors or half the neighbors, you have a real problem on your hands. Folks, we put these John Deere stools together in five minutes each. Piece of cake to do. We got them from 247parts.com. You can get not only stools, but all your oil change kits, accessories for your John Deere tractors, mowers, gators, you name it. 247parts.com. Use code GWT to save money off your order. And then I would say, um, I'll kind of combine maybe theft and or vandalism um, or even dumping, right? So I uh, went out to my property one day and there was literally a car up on blocks. Like I'm out in the middle of nowhere and there was a car, an old car up on blocks just off of the side of my drive, not along the road, but on my drive, on my property that was just sitting there. Um, you know, we found when we first bought it, these bins of like fertilizer and these other chemicals, we called the police out there. I thought it was for like a meth grow or some, or a meth lab of some kind or a, a marijuana grow. They said they, it, didn't look like it was anything in particular, like somebody just gardening. It, that doesn't make a lot of sense to me. They did a lot of effort hauling these big bags of stuff and Rubbermaid bins and gallons of water and all sorts of other things out there into the middle of nowhere um, to not do something a little bit shady, I think. I haven't had anything stolen off of that property. I have had things stolen off of uh, my grandparents' property where I grew up. I uh, had 160 acres there, grew up hunting there, and we had hunting stands out there that would get stolen. One evening a buddy had a climber that he got down and left it there he's gonna go back to it the next day in the middle of the night it was stolen like out in the middle of the country in the middle of nowhere but it was sort of visible across a field from where neighbors could see it I mean other tree stands ladder stands that have been stolen um, trespassers too that's everywhere just in general right I mean at the Richland property every property I've ever had except for this one I haven't had any trespassers here it's been great I have good neighbors I have a few neighbors not too many of them and they're all they're all quality um, at least that I've met so far. My, my grandpa was probably one of the most, I don't know, patient, uh, maybe forgiving men that I know in that regard because, I mean, he caught a lot of trespassers on his land and somehow these two guys ended up being able to hunt the back fence row of his land for like 20 years. That always rubbed me wrong, but it wasn't my property. What can I do about it? Um, another guy, he put a note on his ladder stand and said, please take this down. You're not allowed to hunt here in a Ziploc bag and came back a week later or days later, whatever it was, and the Ziploc bag was filled with poop. It was, I mean, the, the guy, the trespasser just didn't give a rip. It's, you know, these guys are just disrespectful. You know, we caught trespassers, potential poachers on our land, turned them in this fall. Uh, it's just never ending, but that's gonna be a part of owning land and you can battle it to an extent, but you need to, I think, accept the fact that that's going to be a challenge and not let it get the best of you. So something that's a big one is actually location. And that's why we ended up with two pieces of property right now. Obviously it goes without saying, if you want a nice chunk of land, you're gonna be further away from town, right? Further away from those conveniences, the grocery stores, gas stations, whatever else it is you need, school even. Um, and so our first piece of property we bought after thinking it was gonna be okay to make that commute. Uh, we take our kids to school and pick them up, drop them off every day realize it's just too far away. You know, there's busy roads, there's delays a lot of times on these highways, and it was gonna be just too much of our life spent running back and forth in a car. It's like, if you wanna be in your car all the time, live by a big city and commute there. So location is really important. Uh, that was one of the reasons we changed our mind and we're gonna build a lot closer to town, a smaller chunk of land, less acres, but closer to town, it was gonna be just a lot more convenient for our lives and a lot less time sitting in a car. But there are days that I don't even leave my property here. I work from home a lot of the time, and whether we're shooting video or I'm answering emails or on the phone, and it's, there's days I don't leave the property at all, but when I do need to go to town or go to school or wherever else, then it's a lot, I mean, it's half the distance of town to the places we need to go versus our other property that we were at. And so it's just a, I can't overstate that, I don't think that, Location is very important. Folks, if you're watching this, there's a good chance you own a tractor and you're gonna need more attachments in the future. Check out what we have to offer at goodworkstractors.com. We sell and ship all over the country every day of the week. We are proud to be sponsored by RimGuard Solutions, a liquid ballast weight. It goes right inside your tires, completely hidden, 
We're big on safety on this channel. These tractors are just too light and tippy right out of the factory. Not only is it gonna help with safety, keeping those rear tires planted on the ground, it helps with loader efficiency and traction too. The benefits of RimGuard include being the heaviest all natural liquid ballast weight on the market. It's not gonna corrode your rims like the old calcium chloride. It's not gonna freeze and it's available at over a thousand dealers nationwide. Find the dealer near you at RimGuardSolutions.com. And kind of going along with that, is gonna be your cost. There's a lot of costs that go into it, but the closer you are to town, typically the higher the cost per acre for that land. So that's a big consideration there too. You're trying to find that, that fine line, right? To get the most you can, the best bang for your buck in a good location, but it's not just the cost of the land. Of course, you've got the taxes, right? More acreage oftentimes means more taxes that you have to pay on that too. You got the cost of developed land, right? That means equipment, you know, your tractor, your skid steer, if you want an ATV or UTV to ride around on out there, all the attachments that go along with that, if you need to bring in a lot of gravel like we did out here and at another place to put in a gravel drive, there's just so many tools that you might need. And a big one too, I mean, if you're not just an open field, are trees, right? And, and trees alone are a big topic of, of conversation. You know, if you have a lot of woods or a lot of forest, do you want to open that up? Do you want to log it off? Um, are you going to maintain trails, right? When trees are dropping down and crashing and if you have a storm, right? You're going to potentially have a lot more debris and a bigger mess to clean up potentially too. So trees can be good and bad. You know, if, if you can do something with them, maybe heat your house with them, right? You got you to gotta weigh those pros and those cons and see if that's really a benefit and a, well, I, I wished we had 140 acres out there at other property. About 20 of it, maybe 25 was field and the rest was all woods. And I would have loved for that to have been more like a 50-50 split. It's just too much woods. It's just, it's overwhelming <laughs> the amount of trees that are out there and the trails and the things that come crashing down and you just wanna get to the other side. You gotta stop, clean something up, get it out of the way before you can do that. It becomes a pain in the butt unless you just really absolutely love that work. And so that kind of gets into the, the never ending projects that are really out there on a piece of property and not necessarily the projects that you want to do, right? You make a, a plan, yeah, I'm going to do this. Like I want to put a soccer field in, right? And I want to do, uh, put a shooting range in. I want to do some other things too. And it's like, well, those are all the fun things, right? But they're lower on the priority list. And, and when a real need comes up, like now we got to finish off the rest of this driveway because it's a muddy mess and you, it's just unusable for uh, all intents and purposes. And it makes a mess if you do drive your vehicle down there. So if you have those trees that fall over, right? That's cleaning something up. And maybe if you have drainage issues, you know, you're, you're spending your time rerouting that water or regrading and, and things like that too, instead of doing the fun stuff you want to do. And so keep that in mind that your progress is likely going to be a lot slower than you would like it to be. You're not going to be able to go according to plan because there's going to be a lot of opportunities for things to go wrong that are of higher importance to correct before you can get back to the fun stuff. And then I would say, you know, water in general, water is good and bad. We've got some small ponds out here, nothing big. And we've got a little, creek or stream kind of running through the property too and it's well we've we've owned the property not quite a year so i've seen it it's just about every season um historically i'm very familiar with this area too we had some really high water for a few years too but um part of our property is dry part of the year and wet part of the year and so that is not awesome um, i would like all my property to be usable but it just really isn't for part of the year it's too wet to I mean, you can put muck boots on or, or hip waders and go through part of it, um, but you certainly can't take a vehicle through part of it for a good chunk of the year. And so that's kind of a, we've got 42 acres out here, about half of that's usable right now, this time of year. I'd like it to all be usable this time of year, but that's just not gonna happen. If that matters to you, that's, you can't do anything about that. That's mother nature doing its thing. So um, keep that in mind. I, I do appreciate that because it, still gives me more space, right? I, it still keeps the neighbors further away uh, and, and kind of gives us our, our solitude that we like to have and, and, and nature for all, sign, all kinds of animals and birds and creatures and everything else. So that's fun too. Um, but put that into your calculation or your valuation on how much that land is actually worth. And one actually that, that Chris mentioned too are utilities. And that can make a big difference on on your cost. It could be your development cost, could be your utility cost ongoing down the road too. Um, out here where we're at, it's propane. There's no natural gas. That kind of stinks. 
but there's already underground tanks that are out here. It's already set up that way. There is geothermal for the house, so that's really nice uh, too, but it does have fiber internet. So, I mean, that's a, that's a trade-off, and of course, electric is, is everywhere. Our property, our other chunk of land, they would do 600 feet free of overhead line um, if you wanted to go all the way back off the road, you know, a certain ways. You could pay extra to have underground, of course, but if you could deal with the overhead lines, then it was free to get 600 foot back there for electric. Gas costs a little bit, but not a whole lot. Um, and if, at least in my area, if you get a certain distance off of the road and there are city utilities, like city water and city sewer, if you're far enough off the road, you don't need to connect to those. Uh, we had another property actually that we bought, 35 acres where we were planning on building. And that's what we did. We, we, we went back far enough so we didn't have to connect to the city water and city sewer. That would have made a world of difference. So check with your jurisdiction on that too. So folks, that's some things I've learned over the years, you know, both, well, every, all the above, owning property, leasing property, being able to use with permission other folks' property as well, and just seeing all the different pitfalls that there can be out there and um, trying to make the most informed decisions. So hopefully this helps you out. And for all you folks watching that do own land, if there are regrets or there's things I didn't mention, you know, if there's something else for, that you can save somebody a bundle of money on by not making that mistake, then, then let, let them know, leave a comment down below. And of course, when the time comes and you're gonna need those tractor attachments to develop that land, we'd love to help you out. We sell and ship tractor attachments all over the country every day of the week. Check out goodworkstractors.com. We have free shipping, rewards, and financing too. If you enjoyed today's video, well, we'd love to have you tag along, so hit that subscribe button right down below. It's completely free. I want to thank you for taking time out of your day to stop by, and until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon.